wrong, Shadow? That image playing over and over in your head like a gif? It's pronounced jif. Huh? Dot jif, like the peanut butter. That's dumb. It's graphics interchange format. The P in JPEG stands for photographic, but I bet you don't say JFEG. Name one word that starts with G pronounced like J. Gentrification. Shoot! Should have thought of that. I just hate you in general. You mean in general? Yeah! I am going to kill you! No matter what, you can't deny Sonic's persistence in animation. He's been featured in five different TV shows. He's endured wacky antics, a dystopian future, bad rock music, anime, and sports tape. Oh god, the sports tape. But now, he's facing his greatest challenge yet, the multiverse. Sonic Prime is a 2022 action comedy that premiered on Netflix. One fateful day, Eggman uncovers the Paradox Prism, a gem that can warp reality at his will. Team Sonic battles for the stone, but Sonic cracks it Leroy Jenkins style. The prism splits the world into various shatter spaces. Sonic survives the blast, but finds himself in strange reflections of his world. Moreover, he finds opposition from the doppelgangers living there. Meanwhile, Eggman plans to conquer the multiverse. Sonic will need to slide across the Shatterverse, collect the Prism Shards, and restore his home to one piece. Can Sonic rescue his friends in time? Sonic Prime is incredible. The visuals, animation, and character dynamics are all spot on. It has some of the best fights in any Sonic cartoon. Man of Action, the brain trust behind Ben 10, is responsible for Sonic Prime. Is it the best Sonic show ever? That remains to be seen. Before we continue, Sonic Prime is confirmed for a 24 episode run, but only the first 8 episodes are available at the time of this video. Netflix has a terrible track record of leaving good programs to die, while giving a blank check to whatever the hell this thing is. Sonic Prime is not exempt from poor business decisions. If I can't get around to the later episodes, that's why. Secondly, there will be full spoilers. Lastly, big thanks to the art Yoshi for doing the thumbnails. She's been drawing my video assets for the past year. Go check her out. Alright, let's get into this. The story begins when Sonic and Pals thwart Eggman's latest scheme. Eggman excavates the Paradox Prism, a stone filled with crazy powers. Kind of weird they don't mention the Master Emerald, but Shadow casually owns a Chaos Emerald. Maybe that'll be explained in Season 2. Without a second thought, Sonic homing attacks the Prism and all hell breaks loose. Minutes later, he wakes up in New York City, a dystopian dimension ruled by Eggman's doppelgangers. Sonic can't remember what happened, but maybe his friends have the answer. He experiences weird side effects, like his electric shoes and a character arc. Sonic the Hedgehog is a cocky yet loyal speed demon. Despite his constant chatter, he trips over his metaphorical blind spots. He takes his friends for granted, fumbles with his prism enhanced shoes, and blames himself for creating the multiverse. I remember now. I was too focused on winning. I didn't listen. I... Eggman didn't create this world. I did. Wait, Sonic feels remorse for making life worse for his friends? Sonic has self-doubt? Pinch me, I might be dreaming. Sonic's greatest strength isn't his speed, but his empathy. We get tidbits on why Team Sonic became friends in the first place, not including befriending them again in each dimension. Sonic bumps into doppelgangers of his former gang. These variants include angsty cyborgs, starving jungle folk, and pirates. At first, these guys treat Sonic as a nuisance, but he slowly earns their trust. Sonic works to be a better listener and not take his friends for granted. It's part of Sega's recent trend of expanding his emotional range. We saw Sonic feel scared and sad in the live action movies. In Sonic Frontiers, he pretends everything is fine when it's not fine. Oh, did I mention he's dying? Prime takes his approach one step further. Sonic tracks down Knife, a version of Tails with cybernetic limbs. Nine was a loner who got bullied for his two tails. In retaliation, he invented seven cybernetic appendages to defend himself. In a way, he became a nine-tailed fox. Nine attacks Sonic for discovering his secret hideout, but Sonic saves his life from a subway collision. Sonic's like, Nine, in my dimension, you were my friend, and you made the coolest inventions ever. Believe in me. Believe in the Kamina who believes in you. 
Wait, did you just quote Gurren Lagann? That's my favorite anime. Did we just become best friends? You bet we did. Nine agrees to examine Sonic's Prism Enhanced Gear and get him back home. Sonic's glass half full outlook is quite commendable. Is any of this subtle? Not really. But the show proves why his friends matter. They lean on his support as much as he leans on them. Sonic doesn't get anywhere near as vulnerable as his Sat AM counterpart. Sonic's Sat AM had him crying, saying goodbye to his uncle, and almost losing his friends. However, Prime Sonic has a few tricks up his sleeves. When Sonic shattered the Paradox Prism, the Sone's energy corrupted his body, gloves, and shoes. Each dimension changes his gear to suit that world's specific environment. In the Jungle World, he gets retractable claws. In the Sea World, he gets hover shoes. I have mixed feelings on his shattered gear mechanic. On one hand, it's cool seeing Sonic receive abilities that are unique to that dimension. On the other hand, they're underutilized. Just when Sonic fumbles in the dark, dumb luck kicks in and his gear conveniently averts disaster. Sonic uses his new gear once or twice and then forgets about it. The prism gear mechanic comes off as a lazy way to sell more toys. Moreover, only Sonic's gloves and shoes change with each dimension. That begs the question, why doesn't he get new outfits? If you're gonna change his appearance, you might as well go all the way. Meanwhile, the Eggbots capture Sonic and Nine. They're brought to the Chaos Council, a coalition of Eggman's doppelgangers. The first member is Dr. Babel, a baby with unusually high intelligence. Next is Dr. Don't, an angsty teenager who spends all day on a steam deck. Then there's Dr. Dunnett, a cranky old man on steroids. The fourth member is Dr. Deep, a 20-something samurai with an equally disturbing goatee. The fifth and final member is Mr. Dr. Eggman, a middle-aged man whose fashion sense is rather questionable. Are the five Eggman walking stereotypes? Yep. Are they memorable antagonists? Absolutely. They bicker like angry relatives at Thanksgiving and it's glorious. The Eggman run a pacer test on the blue blur. At certain velocities, he can trigger an EMP wave across the city. The Eggman thrown in a dangerous obstacle course, but Sonic gets an A rank with his fighting skills. The best part of Sonic Prime is the fight scenes. Making a three-dimensional action show on a limited TV budget is no easy feat. The Sonic Boom cartoon was a mixed bag in this area. Most of its fights were cookie cutter and unnecessary. Limited animation aside, the storyboarding was stilted and uninspired. Thankfully, Boom got more better in Season 2. The fights were more ambitious and varied. Prime takes Boom's serviceable battles to new heights. Sonic Prime's fight choreography is inventive. Firstly, it makes full use of Sonic's moveset. He'll not only spin dash into things, but he also runs circles around his enemies. He's constantly trying new tactics on the fly. Moreover, he uses the environment to his advantage. Secondly, the terrain in each dimension plays a major factor. In New York City, Sonic uses the city's train system to misdirect his foes. In the pirate dimension, Sonic is afraid of the sea, like, no duh, he can't swim. But he uses his new hover shoes to race Eggman's goons across the deadly seas. The changing environments prevent the show from getting stale. Lastly, the supporting characters get their own moments to shine. Tails uses his gizmos to fight. Knuckles speaks with his fists, Amy wields her hammer, and Rouge uses flights and kicks. These guys combine their strengths with Sonic's mobility. Hell, even Shadow gets a piece of the action. I have a question for you, my loyal viewer. What's your favorite scene in Sonic Prime? If you leave your answer in the comments below, we can conquer the YouTube algorithm together. My favorite scene is Shadow colliding with Sonic in Episode 2. In The Yolks on You, we flash back to the hour before the Prism incident. Shadow's like, Sonic, you've been causing weird EMP waves all over Green Hill lately. I'm gonna stop you before you do anything dangerously stupid. Sonic retorts, Shadow, I'm kinda in a hurry to take down Eggman. I don't need another lecture on speedrunning. You dare question my wisdom? It's on. Shadow, what are you talking about? You're a beta male, Sonic. Both hedgehogs reenact the jungle battle from Sonic Adventure 2. The scene brilliantly contrasts Sonic's cockiness against Shadow's mad improv skills. Sonic tries spin dashing, super jumping, and even creating a tornado, but Shadow is always one step ahead. This fight isn't just fun to watch, but also built on Shadow's mystique. Shadow the Hedgehog is a brooding introvert who'd rather live in his own sphere. Sadly, Shadow doesn't get much screen time. He fights Sonic once, 
uses Chaos Control to escape the Prism Incident and hangs out in the Void until Sonic can conjure more Prism Energy. He has a solid reason to despise Sonic, since their only home was split a hundred different ways. Unfortunately, Prime doesn't elaborate on Sonic and Shadow's rivalry or whether Shadow is still friends with Rouge. Also, both hedgehogs didn't get split into alternate egos. There is only one Sonic and one Shadow across these 8 episodes. You know, for a show whose entire premise is mixing up the different variants with each other, not having multiple Sonics in the same show is kind of a wasted opportunity. Who knows, maybe these gripes will be addressed in Season 2. I wish we had more backstory for Shadow. That stings even more, considering flashbacks make up 10% of the runtime. Sonic Prime follows a serialized story structure. Each episode leads directly into the next. However, it constantly interrupts itself with flashbacks. Prime starts off with a cold opening, but sprinkles tidbits of Team Sonic's life just before the Paradox Prism. I didn't mind these flashbacks at first, but they just kept popping up. For example, we cut back to the day Amy and the gang planted a palm tree for Sonic. The tree symbolizes the group's collective friendship, but Sonic barely cares because it's like every other tree in Green Hill. He's correct in that assessment. The gift isn't just the tree. It's all the memories we've made around that tree. Right, Sonic? Don't you think you're all being a little too... sentimental? I guess you don't get it, do you, Sonic? This flashback pops up like three or four times in the exact same context. I bet the constant flashbacks were done as a way to save money. A few interruptions isn't so bad if we get 90% of a good story. Thankfully, Prime offers a good story with memorable characters. Let's go over the prominent residents of Green Hill Zone. Rouge the Bat is a flamboyant treasure hunter. In Sonic Adventure 2, she spent most of the game prying the Master Emerald from Knuckles. She only cared for Jules, her friendship with Shadow, and Bat Cleavage. Why was that even a thing? I can't believe your tits are one polygon! <laughs> In Prime, she's a permanent member of Sonic's posse. She values treasure, but enjoys hanging out with Team Sonic. It's kind of a weird choice, but I like this new direction. She makes for a competent field commander, has some funny exchanges with Knuckles, and dresses modestly for a change. This is a small detail, but Rouge sleeps upside down by hanging from a tree. You know, like a real bat? Rouge and her friends get alternate versions of themselves, there are too many variants to list, so I'll keep it brief. They turn into cyborgs, freedom fighters, savage jungle people, and pirates. Who can forget pirates? Arg. Oh, and Jack Jacksepticeye voices a pirate for one nanosecond. Take them for everything they've got. Almost makes me feel sad for them. I'm Irish. Irish the Hedgehog. Weird choice, but I guess they needed to win some Twitter points. Most of these clones are hostile, but Sonic's compassion wins them over especially Tails. Tails Mile Prower is a tech genius who invents crazy gadgets. He looks up to Sonic as an older brother. He warns Sonic to not mess with the prism, but that plan goes out the window. Nichols the Echidna is a stoic guy who rather speak with his fists. He likes to hang back, but on the field, he'll gladly be your muscle. Amy Rose is a compassionate lady with an equally compassionate hammer. While Sonic is the frontliner, Amy is the soul of the team. Amy's crush on Sonic is significantly downplayed. Similar to the Sonic Boom cartoon, Amy shares a healthy friendship with Sonic without being an obsessive stalker. She will do anything to protect the ecosystem of Green Hill. She's even good friends with the dopey fisherman. Big the Cat is a gentle but slightly dim-witted fisherman. He owns a pet frog and will fish just about anywhere, even city dumpsters. He's the closest thing to a normal guy in Sonic Prime. He strives for a simple life but Sonic's escapades mess up his day. He'll only help if he's got no other choice. Not gonna lie, I find that dynamic funny. Big is, ironically, a small side character in Prime. Yet, he appears so often, I would've considered him an unofficial member of Team Sonic. But don't mess with his jungle variant. He'll snap if you push his buttons. Look, Pim, I know it's our job to help this guy and everything, but I think this guy's a lost cause. He's obviously made up his mind. Why don't we just cut our losses and get out of here? Oh, come on. That's nonsense, Charlie. We've never given up on a job so far. This miserable! Um, I know you don't know who I am. I'm not angry! Big's inclusion greatly contributes to Sonic Prime's sense of community. Sonic Prime achieves the impossible. Make Green Hill Zone feel like a tangible community. In most Sonic media, it's meant for iconic visuals and not much substance. 
Sonic Prime makes the zone a personal home for the cast. When Sonic travels the multiverse, he's teleporting in the general vicinity of Green Hill. He recognizes his favorite landmarks being ruined, overgrown, or bulldozed into oblivion. He has a clear connection with his old community. Moreover, we get a slice of normal life at Green Hill. Sonic casually greets Big on his way to adventure. The original characters from Sonic Forces are citizens of this world. Green Hill Zone isn't just Tired Aesthetic Pack number one. It's a community that holds real significance for our characters. These elements further Sonic's drive to put his home back together. The last piece of the puzzle lies in the technical department. The animation is fluid, fancy, and full of personality. The animators went above and beyond. The lighting suits each world very well, and the art direction is quite spectacular. But there is one glaring flaw. The one thing holding Sonic Prime back from Masterpiece status is the pacing. I don't just mean Sonic's running speed, he runs just fine. Prime's story is a little too fast paced. It goes full throttle, briefly catches his breath, then full sprints again. Rinse and repeat, I watched Sonic Prime in two sessions. At the end of that marathon, I was kind of exhausted. When Prime eventually hits the brakes, the slow emotional scenes are well done. But Prime is about 60% action. It gets mind-numbing if you're watching everything in one go. It's the kind of series you should watch one episode at a time. You know, soaking in like a high-quality GIF. It's pronounced GIF. Fine, a high-quality GIF. What's next, Shadow? You're gonna tell me laser is an acronym? Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Huh, didn't know that. Can we just get to the tier list, please? How well do the dimensions stack up? In Sonic Prime, they're called Shatter Spaces. That's pretty cool, but we only visit four locations. New York City, Boss Cage Maze, The Grim, and No Place. Each place has its own unique backstory and environmental hazards. Let's do a Shatter Space tier list, because why not? Let's judge each dimension by two factors, how they contribute to the plot and whether or not they look cool. Let's start from the bottom. In dead last, we have the Grim. It's a desert world with gray hexagonal rocks strewn around, and it's completely barren. Sonic and Nine stake out the place for five minutes, but Sonic decides to jet. I don't blame him, it's a pretty boring place. In C tier, we have No Place, the dimension with pirates, high sea levels, and Jacksepticeye. Other than the intense pirate battles, there's not much to say about this flooded dimension. But I'm telling you man, those sea dogs are not my cup of tea. A sea dog? What's it made of? Don't ask. Next up is Boss Cage Maze, a jungle dimension ruled by Thorn Rose, a ruthless version of Amy. Thorn Rose hoards most of the food on the ground and leaves her former friends to starve on the treetops. Thorn Rose and her friends got into a huge misunderstanding over rationing the jungle's limited resources. The upper portion of the forest is filled with dead branches while the bottom portion is bathed in thorns and ugly blue lighting. Boss Cage Maze gets a pass for its backstory. Boss Cage's situation wasn't caused by Eggman or some ecological disaster. It was refreshing having a moral conundrum that wasn't solved by punching robots. The only thing keeping Boss Cage back is its poor lighting choices. The treetops look fine, but when you venture to the ground level, it's ugly as hell. It's muddy, full of ugly shades of blue, and straight up looks unfinished. I get they wanted a spooky jungle vibe, but it just looks bland. In A tier, we have New York City, a dystopian dimension ruled by Eggman. It's a mechanical wasteland with bad robots and a foreboding atmosphere. It's no accident it reminds me of Robotropolis from Sonic AM. Unlike Boss Cage Maze, the lighting is actually tolerable. I like the dark reds, foreboding oranges. I could tell that New York had the most care and attention for the production team. Sonic travels on elevated railways, a testing chamber, the subway, and on the streets. It's astounding how many sets they got from this one locale, but it's not my favorite. That honor goes to Green Hill Zone, or at least the pre shatter version of Green Hill. I don't know how they did it, but the way they textured and modeled the place is off the charts. The colors and various landmarks just pop. The series also did a good job making Green Hill feel like a community that personally matters to Sonic. The palm trees and loop-de-loops give him and the audience some emotional attachment. I may get tired of running through Green Hill Zone again and again in the games, but Prime convinced me there's still a soul left in this location. And that's the tier list. 
if we make it to season 2 and 3, you bet I'll keep the other dimensions in mind. Okay, let's wrap this up. Sonic Prime is damn good. The animation, fight scenes, and multiversal aspects are all incredible. I especially loved Sonic's characterization. He's hot-headed and a little clumsy, but he learns not to take his friendships for granted. No matter how far someone's fallen, he'll always help them back to their feet. I enjoyed the humor, the world-building, and the genuine connection between Sonic and his peers. The constant flashbacks and relentless fast pace might be a little too much, but otherwise, it's an A tier cartoon. I think it might just be my favorite Sonic cartoon, but yeah, I still have to watch the very first one, so I'll get you back on that. Sonic Prime might not be the funniest or most emotionally complex cartoon, but it'll make you smile. Assuming Netflix doesn't screw up like they usually do, I look forward to season two. Thank you for watching. Remember, no hedgehogs were harmed in the making of this video. How did you end up alone on that island? Because I have got a doozy. Ow! Uh, uh, I'm like, uh. Learn to focus.